Usually a crash this bad would write your car off. But there's a twist. After this BMW M3 was crashed into a house, it left some serious damage. And it turns out the driver wasn't insured, which is bad news for him, but good news for me. Because if this car got as far as the insurance, they say it's not repairable. But today, we're going to prove them wrong. Today's challenge is going to be this rear quarter. And this is something that I've never done before because not only is it the rear quarter, it's also all the inner structure of the car here, which is uh, usually would take a specialist repair. But uh, may, today not. <laughs> Insurance companies have a lot to consider before deciding the car's repairable. How much is the car worth? Is it safe to repair? How much are the parts? What will the labor cost be? And sometimes even the cost of providing a higher car comes into it. Luckily for me, I only have to consider some of those points. And I've already carried out a lot of work whilst keeping it under budget. 37, 750. But now it's left me with the biggest part of the repair. We have Jack from Florida. Uh, sorry, Freddie, we've stole Jack from you now. <laughs> they nicked me. <laughs> In the last video, before starting any repairs to this car, I called Jack to get his professional opinion. Is this repairable? Yeah, anything's repairable. And to be 100% sure we were doing it right, Jack come over. So basically what you're gonna do is I'm gonna give you something to cut this whole thing out. We're just gonna start hacking out stuff. It's gonna look scary, but it's gonna be 100% better once we cut it all out. 100% better. <laughs> And that's exactly what we did. I started hacking away at all the damaged parts on the rear because once we get the outer layer off, we should be able to see the damage inside. My compressor has not got the power to do it. We don't want to grind it because if we start grinding, it's going to flick sparks all over like the carbon roof. We need to use the compressor. So I think we're going to head to Mallory Performance and uh, use their compressor. <laughs> And with a bigger compressor, the job was a lot easier. And I got to work at cutting away the rear quarter. <laughs> now we can see the full inner structure of the car. And you can see it's built up of loads of different parts. Now we've got to work out what we need to replace and what's safe to keep. There was actually a lot more parts which were damaged, including a lot of the inner structure. So I'm cutting away all of the damaged parts now, but being careful not to damage anything which is worth keeping. Which left us with not much really. Let's see the fitment. Oh, bang on. Now we've took all the tension on off this. This is all nice and wasn't like that before, but halfway there. Look at how different it looks. Mint, not so mint. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, crazy! Whoa, that looks mad! Now we've got a lot of the damaged parts off, it's time to begin work. And first thing I'm going to do is remove the rear door. This is going to give us a lot more access for where we're working. And it's a pretty easy thing to remove. Now we can see even more of the damage. Next up, we've got to get the car in the air on axle stands and then I can get underneath it and start removing the side skirt. The rear quarter runs all the way down pretty much to the front of the car and the side skirt covers a lot of this. So we need to remove it to assess any damages underneath that. And whilst I was doing that, my dad was inside the car starting to remove the roof lining. Because we're going to be doing a lot of welding on this car, we don't want to set fire to anything. And the roof lining will probably be the first thing that sets fire. And with all the interior lights unclipped, we can finally pull the roof line in out of place through the front of the car because we haven't got the windscreen in. Look, 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 look at all the carbon. Oh yeah. That looks wicked. Now, we still need to get off all this damaged part. And we're gonna say from this line forward is very good. Um, and from backwards is very bad. So what we've got to do, but the thing is on the inside, some of the parts are very good. So what we want to try and do is these little spot welds here, we don't want to drill them all the way through because then we've got nothing to weld on. So we've got to try and almost sand off the spot weld so we can 
break off this part of the body without damaging the under part. Is that right, Jack? That's correct. That's How correct. can he hear me with these headphones on? I got x-ray hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I need some eyeglasses. That's what they call them in America. Eyeglasses on. And I'm now using the belt sander to just weaken those spot welds. What I'm trying to do is just take off the top of the spot weld and not damage the panel underneath it. And there is a lot of these spot welds which hold the outside panel to the inside structure. So I'm going to be here a long time. My dad's now removing all of the wiring around the wheel arch because we're going to be doing a lot of cutting and welding around there and all the wiring on the inside of the rear quarter as well. And I'm still at it with sanding down these spot welds. Once I think I've sanded down enough, I'll use this spot weld chisel to wedge in between the outer panel and the inner panel to break away these spot welds. And by doing this, I should be able to separate the outside skin to the inside skin. Not forgetting all the spot welds which are on top as well. This job is pretty relentless. Just about ready to come off. So we're going to cut a line here. And then the reason we're going to cut here and not somewhere up here because this still looks okay is because this is a nice area to, to join on because it's like flat and you can hide it quite nice. I'm going to let Jack do that in case I snag the inside and then that will be a big problem. So... So now Jack's cutting the outer quarter panel off, being careful not to cut through and damage the inner panel, because this part of it looks okay. Yeah. 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 Woo. Look at that. Now, there's barely any, oh, there is more stuff we've got to take off. Have we got to take all that off? Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, so now, inner structure. It doesn't stop there, does it? The whole thing. The whole go. thing gotta go. Because that's what... all one piece. And this is all a... this. Oh wow! <laughs> all right, that is a lot of drilling. Yeah. This yeah. is this is not an easy job. Um. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. That's Kevin's blanket. <laughs> Kevin, have you used a blanket, mate? Sorry Kevin, but now we've got to be really careful because now I'm sanding down the spot welds of more damaged parts But now when I'm separating these damaged parts I want to make sure I don't damage the part that they're connected to because we want to keep that and some spot welds I've got to drill out again all of this takes so much patience and we've got to be so careful here But between me and Jack we're getting through it and it's quite interesting to see how this car is built in all these tiny little sections and all of these sections together give it the strength that it needs. But now it needs to go up in the ramp and we need to remove the wheel because there's even more parts that we need to replace underneath the arch. We're having to cut off way more than we originally thought just because there was damage to this arch, like the inner arch here, but this inner arch is all one big, like huge panel all the way to the inside. So we're actually gonna have to take off this damper here, and we're going to be replacing this part as well, which means we've got to get to all the welds underneath these, this seam here, which this is a way bigger job than we thought, but still possible, I think. More grinding. Let's do it. This is definitely part of the reason why the insurance companies won't touch this type of damage. They'll quote for the repair they think it needs, and as you dive into it deeper, you'll find it needs even more which requires even more labor work. Luckily for us, we're not an insurance company. Out comes the wire wheel. This is gonna grind away all of the seam sealer which is covering over the spot welds that we need to drill out. This is, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, it's not the most fun thing in the world. <laughs> what a messy job this was, but it needs to be done. The seam sealer is covering over all of those spot welds which are mentioned. And without doing it, we won't be able to drill them off nicely. You can see here the panels that we're trying to get off in one piece without damaging the underneath. And out comes the drill to drill out even more spot welds. I even had Liam come in and help me with it. This thing was a huge job with hours of labor, but eventually we got off all the damaged parts. Well, nearly all. All I have left to do is take out this piece here and this metal here. Right now I'm just drilling these out 
Let's get started. Jack continues to do even more drilling. Again, being careful not to damage any of the parts that we still need. We're at the next stage. Well, Jack's been absolutely smashing it out, but I understand now what's going on. So, right, we've got everything damaged off apart from this rear parcel shelf, which is a little mangled. And Jack was thinking about straightening this out to try and get it perfect, but a better alternative, as what we've said, is we have this from BMW, which is the whole rear shelf there. But if we wanted to replace this whole rear shelf, we're gonna start attacking all of this side and that's gonna be, we ain't gonna be done till 2026. So we can get the bits off which are damaged and use parts of this to create a good one. So we're essentially making a nice piece instead of Smashing all that end out. We'll, you'll see. We'll, you'll see when we do it. I'm trying to explain. It. It's not really working very well. <laughs> Another question you might be asking is: After we've got off all of these damaged parts, how much is it going to cost us to replace them all? And what are we going to replace them all with? We have this. Now, the funny story about this is that this actually come with the BMW. I got this free with the car. So the person who I bought the car off was gonna to attempt to repair it. Bearing in mind, obviously they didn't go for insurance, but couldn't find anyone that was mad enough to take on the repair, or was it even financially viable? So we got this free with the car, which was an absolute bonus. The only issue with this is we need more than this part of the quarter, this dents here, but on the good side, all this inner structure, everything inside here, the shelf and everything like that is all usable to an extent. Even though having this second hand part has saved me a lot of money, what it didn't save us is time. You've already seen how long it takes to strip apart the panels of the outer structure to the inner structure, and that's exactly what we've got to do on this second hand panel as well. <laughs> My dad has been working away stripping apart the panels of this second hand panel, whilst I've been working stripping apart the M3. And in both equal timing, we seem to have it finished off. Yeah! Now we have a good inner structure that we can put on the BMW M3. It's go time. And now we are, I say at the point now where we can start building things back up. And end that right, Jack. I hope so, because we've done a lot of work. Right, should we just try and get, yeah. we'll try and get this onto there, but it's got a slot in like holes here and all sorts. So. Is a technique of doing it. Okay. Hopefully. Shall we get it on? Are we all, right. all going as a, as a team? This is the time the second hand inner structure meets the BMW M3. A lot of people think you might need a jig for this type of work, but as long as everything is in measurement, which it was, there's no reason to use a jig for this type of work. Step 67. Now, all of this is on, and you can see the holes that were drilled out, and I would say spot weld, but it's not called spot welding, is it? It's called a plug weld. Plug weld in. So we're going to put, Jack's already uh, started trying the welder out here. And we're going to just do every single plug weld now, which is a lot. Like there's literally holes everywhere. It looks like a stack of cheese at the minute. Let's get welding. I'm the apprentice. The super Jack. professional here. <laughs> so I am, I am impressed. A little bar. bit of welding and that looks amazing. So have at it. Nice, that sounded good. Oh, you missed a little bit. Oh, uh, I missed Dude, a little bit. That's not bad. Like, this is literally your second weld on the car. Yeah, so. that, I'm, I'm, yeah I'm happy with that. So, so like, can I just plug that bit in? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. There you go. Not bad. Not bad. But if we're gonna get done, <laughs> And I want it done by tomorrow and not next week. I think you better take over. I'll take that. <laughs> so what we essentially have done here is replace all the broken and bent parts with secondhand straight parts. And it'd be pretty obvious if anything was out of tolerance because it just wouldn't line up. Now we have to take this little piece here. We decided not to put this whole piece in. We really didn't need to, but we're going to cut this right on this line here that I've made. Wow. Right there. wow. This is going to be a huge time saver and save us replacing that whole back panel. Yeah. Okay, so now that should fit. Oh my God, that is sensationally. Wow. You've just got to weld that together. Jack's made sure that the panels are spot on. He's going to clamp it down 
and weld it together. Weld time. We're gonna let Jack do the welding between the two panels because this is a pretty vital part. And I'm not so experienced in welding yet. Yeah, look, joined, joined up, clean it up, looking good. All these spot welds are in. That is pretty much most of the inner panel done. Well done, Jack. Oh, yeah. Boom. Oh, oh, oh. Original gangster. Now you can see all the spot welds or plug welds where we've put in the exact OEM spots they were before. So it will be as strong, if not stronger, than standard. Now, Jack has been absolutely smashing it. Can we just say thanks to Jack and subscribe to Jack's channel? Because all day he's come over and he's just stayed in the unit and we've not let him out. He's slept in here <laughs> and everything. And he's got this far, but I feel like I've learned so much as well. So. There's a point as well where Jack is going to have to go and we're going to have to carry on this ourselves. Isn't but, that like today? Yeah, that's today. So <laughs> we're trying to get as much done as possible and now it's a huge moment. All of this is set in and it's all primed up and nicely sealed up to an extent. But now it's the point where we're putting on, as you like to call it, the side panel. No, the side piece. The side piece <laughs> called what? Sarah. Sarah, the side piece is coming out. <laughs> Look at this. A subscriber sorted me out with Sarah, the side piece. <laughs> Sarah looks good. <laughs> so a subscriber messaged me saying he's been trying to sell this for ages on eBay. Not sold it. I don't know why. I mean, there must be a handful of people that really want this. Sarah, the side piece. This is how the panel would come if I ordered it from BMW. The whole side of a car. As you guys know, we don't need the whole side of the car. So Jack's now cutting off the parts which we do need. Leaving it with a bit of overhang. Whoa! Oh my god! Look at that! <laughs> We then got to take the side piece off, put some masking tape on it, which is going to help Jack cut it in a perfectly straight line on the top half and on the bottom half. Then we can put the side piece back on the car, overlay it onto the panels which are already there, mark them up, and once Jack has made his mark in the top half and the bottom half, we can then take the side piece back off the car again, and it can make a perfect cut in both of them. This is going to ensure that we get a nice lineup between the side piece and the original car. Is that interesting? <laughs> <laughs> now when we put the side piece back onto the car, you can see it lines up perfectly. Well done, Jack. We couldn't have done this without you. Now before we do any welding, we're going to put the wheel on, lower it off the ramp, get the door and put the door on as well. We need to make sure everything lines up. Look at that. Including the boot as well. And instead of having it on the ramp, we've lowered it to the floor to make sure none of the panels are flexing anywhere. The only thing which was slightly off was the boot lid. So we had to make a few more adjustments. But after those adjustments, Look at that. we got it pretty much spot on. With this being confident that it will fit, the side piece comes off. Go. <laughs> My dad will start to drill some holes in it ready for the spot welds to go in or the plug welds and then drill some holes in the existing panels on the car as well and then I'll get the panel bond out and start applying it to the inside of the arch on the side piece. Jack will make sure it's neatened up. Then I also apply panel bond to the inner arch on the car at the moment. This is how it's done from factory. We can then put back on the side piece for the final time and the next step would be to weld it. Hello! It's uh, the rear quarters on. We're gonna get Jack to do this weld here because I think that's gonna be quite vital if we mess that up. And then after that, we can do all the spot welds, clean it all up, paint it and start putting it back together. I think that's it. It's Not almost fixed. Yeah, it's almost there. It is literally almost there. Yeah. Sarah is doing bits. Let's do it. Why are you putting that on? That's for Jack. You're not welding. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> Jack got to work with joining Sarah the side piece to Michael the M3, I guess we can call him. And after he'd finished, they'd almost 
be joined as one. Now, guess what we've got to do? More welding, I'd assume. Yeah, more welding. Yeah, you're correct. So now we've got to weld all these little holes which Jack's left us to do. Then we've got to clean it up. And then we, well, you'll see. It, but we're doing it now, so it could go terribly wrong. But we'll see how we go. You don't seem confident. Mm. I'm confident. At least one of us are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah! We were left to our own devices now. It was down to me and my dad to get this quarter panel on and get it on safely without messing anything up. Took a living woman and turned her into stone, I guess. I guess, I guess I should be thankful. And so far, I think it was looking pretty good. We cleaned up the welds that we put on and we were almost ready for the next step. What's going on over here? Just mixing paint because Matt says he don't know how to do it. Do you know how to do it? No. Next step. All of this is exposed metal now. Um, all of our beautiful welds. Inside the car, it doesn't need to be sealed because it's not exposed to the elements. We also need to etch prime it to stop it from rusting, which is what I'm going to do now. And then we're going to move to the next step. So all I'm going to do is just... Oh, look at the technique. Just dust on a little... <laughs> <laughs> Not that part. I'll just get prime everything, guys, and I'm gonna check back with you once I've etched prime because we don't want to get etched prime all over the camera, and because otherwise none of you will be able to see. This might be a good time to ask you guys who are not subscribed to the channel already just to hit that subscribe button below. It is completely free. Right, etch prime is on. Now, paint, which my dad's mi mixed. I've never used this gun ever before. Don't know how to paint. It don't have to be good though. Can I just show you like the other side? Look what BMW have done. They've just done a light spray. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to go for. And we'll see how it turns out. You look very professional with that. Thank you. I think we smashed it. Right. BMW paint, look, like that, our paint. I think it actually is better. I think it's not actually that bad, to be fair. Bear in mind, you're never gonna see that. It's all gonna be covered up with all this insulation and that, but the fact that we've got a base coat on there is a 10 out of 10. Then, there should be no painting from now on apart from painting this, which we're not gonna attempt that because like, that was just poor workmanship by us. Any time a panel joins between one panel and another panel, it's got this seam sealer on. I failed dramatically at the BMW M5, but I've been taught how to do it now and I think I'm gonna give this a shot next. And this is all my masking up because that's what I didn't do last time. Mask it up, run the sealer down, try and make it look as OEM as possible. Bear in mind, a robot did this. Every bit where the panel joins, we've got a seam seal. Uh, I guess let's do it. Let's go. So I'm hoping now the second time of me attempting to seam seal panels, I get it a little bit better this time. I'm using a brush on seam sealer and it looks quite messy at the moment, me just brushing it on. But I'm hoping when I pull the masking tape off, it should finish quite nicely. I'm trying my best to get the same sort of texture as the OEM seam sealer. But most importantly, is just making sure that the panels are actually sealed. It's more important the sealer actually does its job rather than looking good. And you know what? I don't think I've actually done too bad. Yes, it could be better and there's room for improvement, but it is a lot better than last time. And what I've done as well is masked up the area and then give it a lick of paint underneath. And I am pretty happy with that. Bearing in mind, all of this is going to be covered up with arch liners, trims, and sound deadening. You can see there has been work done, but I don't think it looks like bad work, in my opinion. And with all that done, I can start putting back all the wiring and the sound deadening in the interior and guide all the wiring loom back into place and start installing everything back to where it should go, like the amplifiers in the boot, which luckily survived the accident. Both amplifiers are now back in the rear quarter next to the boot. And after that, I can now put back in the battery. I slot it in place, put all the trims and accessories on it. 
lock it down, and we're on to the next step. Pyro fuse. Now, on this one, on a lot of cars, you can get away with cross-referencing pyro fuses because when you go to a main dealer, they'll try and make you buy this whole line and everything like that just for the sake of a pyro fuse, which you could probably get for like 15 pound. This is with this pyro fuse on BMW. It's a sealed unit and it's in like that. And when the explosive goes off, it pops it away. The pyro, and then when it pops it away, it takes power away from the starter motor so you can't start the car again after it's been in an accident, just in case there's oil everywhere. Now, unfortunately, I had to get one from BMW, 116 pounds plus that, because look, it's a sealed unit. I can't actually buy them from anywhere else. It's a sealed unit. It's got all these cables with it. There's no way we can cross-reference it. It's 116 pound is quite expensive just for effectively a fuse and we didn't even need these cables. But now at least we'll be able to start the car. So I've got to fit this and we should be able to start the car without jumping that pyro fuse. Let's do it. Part of the cabling disconnects from here, which I assume just goes to the body electronics. That goes down, connects to the battery, and then there's another cable which sort of connects at the bottom, which sends the power directly to the starter motor. With the pyro fuse bolted on, you can see the connection here go into those two wires, which will go straight to the engine and connect to the starter motor. Now we should be able to start the car, no problem. After that, I can start putting in the rear shock absorber. This is pretty easy to do. There's just some bolts holding it to the rear quarter and one bolt holding it to the rear arm, remembering to put back all the wiring where it came from. Now, onto the under trays. A bumper uh, holder on her goes in that, does it? And, oh my God, it's sensational. In the bumper bracket as well goes this, and this is a sensor for what I believe is lane assist. I think it needs to be calibrated, but that slots in. Yeah, I think that sits behind the bumper and it helps you for lane assisting. Now I've got the bumper holder on a bolted to the side of the car. I can start to fit the second hand rear bumper, which I got from a breaker's yard. But we're just test fitting it at this point to make sure it lines up. It's in. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, look, that's in there. I think that should come out a bit like that when we've got all the brackets on. And now we know it actually all lines up, we can take it off and start adding even more of the bumper trims which go underneath it. And with them on, we can add the rear crash bar, which again survived the accident, and then put in the brand new second hand rear light I got. Going on for real this time. Yeah. Next up to see what if it lines up, the boot or the trunk you're American. We did test this all out before welding, but we was just worried that after doing all the welding, there might have been some movement in the panels. Sensational work all the way down, around, doesn't touch, straight up here, bang on there. If you look, it's pretty flat. If you look, it's pretty flat. That is a 10 out of 10. It Well, actually, no, let's say it's a 9 out of 10 because it would be a 10 out of 10 if this was red like that. I'm not putting the arch lining in because the body shop is still got to paint and well, we'll have to take it off. So I'm going to put the wheel on and then when I've got the wheel on, we should be able to roll it back and then put the interior in. Somehow the standard wheel is still holding air after the smash. Yeah. First time with a quarter panel on. You'd never know. What do you think? It's great. Better than I thought. First time! Okay. This is looking so good. I can't believe we actually have a quarter panel on and we've managed to repair all the inner structure as well. But we don't want to celebrate too early. Next up, we've got to clip the side skirt in place. Dialed. Then I'm going to be taking out these seats because I bought myself a little treat, which you'll see. One BMW M3. Are these the comfort seats? Yes. Yeah, oh, I can't recline it. It's not plugged in. <laughs> With the seats out, I've got more room to put the roof lining in place. We can slide it back through the rear window, make sure all the electrical connectors are plugged in 
and clip it to the top of the roof. Then we can push in all the OS handles, as we like to call them. I hope we fit these uh, OS handles properly. After that, screensaver popped down with the brand new windscreen. Because we've got all the airbags in and we've done all the work to the dashboard now, it's about time we put in the new windscreen, which just fits perfectly. Now, I'm onto the rear parcel shelf. Sound deadening goes in first, then it's held down with these plastic screws. There's a plastic trim, and then the rear seat belts go on top of that. Once they're in, I can slide in the fabric with the speakers on. This is a bit mad, never seen this before. Instead of the damper actually holding up the boot, the hydraulic straw, it just dampens it to stop it from flying up. The spring is actually pulling open the boot and that's dampering it. So when I close the boot now, the spring's trying to open it. And when I let go, the damper slows it down so it opens nice and slow. That's, uh, can't say I've seen that before. Remember in the last video, the seat belts were locked out. Only one seat belt was locked out, but I sent two off to the airbag team to have the tension as reset because obviously it were locked. And they said the same thing. Only one of them had detonated, which means that either there wasn't a passenger or the passenger wasn't wearing a seat belt. But we should have two faultless seat, one faultless seat belt now. <laughs> yeah. Finally, we can put back in the seat belts. And now they should be faultless. They just slide into this pillar here. There's an electrical connector on them. We bolt it all onto the chassis of the car and then put all the trims back over the top of it. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same for the passenger side. Seat belts are in. Now, I said in the last video, I would have really liked if I had the bucket seats and I manifested it. I've managed not only to get the bucket seats, but also to get the full interior to match. And it was at a really good price because these seats are known for being expensive. That's horrendous, bro. <laughs> Jesus. These, are, these fit me nice. Yeah. What, are you squashed? You don't look it. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, that is mad, that seat. Some people like them, some people dislike them. Nico's not a fan, but I think this is going to completely transform the interior of the car and make it look a little bit more sporty. And it's going to add a little contrast to it as well. Now the rear bench is in, it's time for the door cards. BMW specialists. There's only actually two bolts holding the door card to the door and the rest are all clips. So it's easy enough done. And look at the difference that that's made. Yeah, do we, black. Oh, shall we, shall we make the executive decision to keep it in black? It's up to you. I let's think, I think let's it's compare just, condition. Because look, it's got grey stitching. Yeah, this that, is all that's dirty. Better. Yeah. Why is that better? Because it goes it with the interior. Oh, yeah, I think, the, I think, yeah, I think, because you you've got the black centers. I think you no, stay no, all the you've got the black centers on the seat. Come on, let's send it. Oh, I would have kept it black. So that's a vote of three saying leave it black, and Ethan thinks white, and you think black. So that's five out of six people. Yeah. What does Matt think? I think black. 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 It's yeah. only Ethan that wants it white. You've got to have it white. Look at yeah. it. No. Why? Because it, you put your arm on it. Right. We're deciding black. Let us know in the comments. Black or the white arm. No, think... Big moment. Apparently, word on the street though, with these seats is underneath, they have this module in here. I, I don't know why a seat needs a module, but it also has a module on here. According to people, this seat won't work unless we have the module coded, but I may be able to switch over the modules. But I want to test that theory first by just putting it in and see if it works. So I'm just going to put it in, plug it in, and see if we get any power to it at all, because it'd be quite interesting to find out. Okay. <laughs> so it works. It was a lie. Good job. We didn't do it. And it's a good job we tried first. Easy as that. And it actually works. Look, the, the black, that works, I think. The black armrest with that, I think that works. What a difference those carbon bucket seats have made. 
It's 100% transformed the look of it. Way better. And that is job done. These seats, I'm, I'm glad I've got them. This is gonna be hard, isn't it? Do you need a hand? Maybe. Very big moment. Is it gonna line up with the quarter? Don't make a noise. Lab. This striker thing is not tight, so let's, let's just leave that. It, it might not close properly yet. Oh, person there, the door's gotta go in a bit more. Let's uh, push that in, tighten that up, and we'll go again. Right, do it, Liam. Got it? Yeah. Oh, that is flush. Is good? That's flush. Yes! Look at that! That looks pretty good. Now we need to test whether we've got any faults because we shouldn't have. All airbags are in, everything is plugged in. We shouldn't have any faults, but who knows? Let's test it out. Okay, there's something that's slightly worrying. Restraint system fault, tyre pressure low, rear restraint system, that's the one that's worrying me. Driver restraint system and front passenger restraint system. There's a lot of faults and the rear restraint system is to do with the rear seat belts, which I haven't changed. But there's a good way to find out whether there is an issue with them, the Carly, which is manufacturer level diagnose, diagnostics. And this just goes in your OBD. Easy as that. You would have seen me use this device loads of times. It simply just plugs into the OBD port and then you can connect it through an app on your phone. Connect, connect. So there's loads of things you can do with this. Diagnostic, use car check, customization. You can unlock a load of stuff. First thing I'm gonna do is check for issues and it's gonna run a load of checks on every single part of the car. Let's see what we find. Oh my God. Very bad. <laughs> so the good thing with this, now I can just click clear issues. We're gonna completely clear them. And the lower number we get now back, the better. A lot of the faults are gonna be there because we started the car with things unplugged. But after we've cleared them, we shouldn't get many back. I've not seen an airbag light on the dash anymore. That could potentially be good news. And then Carly had finished doing her checks and we had a lot less faults now. This is good. There's nothing for the airbags we fitted. All of this is to do with the parking sensors and those little uh, modules that we fitted in the rear bumper. All of that needs to be calibrated, which we may have to take it to BMW for. And would you look at that? We're almost completely faultless. Just some tire pressure to add and some washer fluid. Driver assistance which is our lane changing and that type of stuff, so we can ignore that. We'll get that sorted. All the airbag lights are off. We know what we're doing. Thanks, Carla. After that, I went into unlock and customize a few things on the M3. I just unlocked video in motion. Activate speed lock. Yeah, secret menu. So now the car will allow me to play videos on the screen whilst the car is moving. Of course, my eyes will be on the road all the time though. Another cool thing that I could check was that the mileage was legit in this car. Although the odometer on the dashboard will read a certain mileage, Carly can tell if there's a discrepancy by comparing the mileage to the other ECUs in the car. Carly has detected no tampering. It nearly had me. Good peace of mind from Carly. You guys can customize or code and diagnose your car at home with one of these kits. And I wouldn't say they weren't good if they weren't good. These are brilliant bit of kits and we put them in for every road trip. Go and grab one with a link in the description. There's a discount code there as well. And uh, thank me later when you're using this in a spot of bother or you find that your car's had mileage discrepancy. I think this is all good and safe to get to the body shop now. Let's uh, take it for its first actual proper drive. done pretty good solid 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 effort i think <laughs> i literally cannot believe we've got the m3 this far in this amount of time although we still have got a lot more stuff to do to it we've made a lot of progress already what a car look at that oh the seats have made a 10 10 difference ain't they just seeing the seats through that absolutely sorry we proved the insurance wrong we've done it 
under budget as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. This BMW is going to the body shop and next time we see it, it should all be one color. See you in the next video. Peace out. It's down to us and buyers. I mean, me and uh, my, my dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs>